Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are gonna make some keto-friendly falafel. A few weeks ago, I did a video for some keto hummus using the Aviate brand Lupini Flakes as a substitute for chickpeas. Another common Middle Eastern food that uses chickpeas is falafel. And we are gonna make that today with a combination of the Lupini Flakes and flour from Aviate Foods. Like the hummus recipe, I will be using the Aviate Foods brand of Lupini Flakes and Lupini Flour for this video. Now, I don't wanna turn this into some Aviate Foods commercial because it isn't, but Aviate is the only company that I'm aware of that makes these flakes, and they are such a good substitute for chickpeas. I've attempted this recipe, both shallow frying these in oil and baking them, and I have found that baking seems to give me the best overall taste and texture. So that's what we're gonna do today. Additionally, I have found that convection baking is the way to go on this. So if you have a convection oven, set it to 425 degrees Fahrenheit convection or 220 Celsius. If your oven does not do convection, set it to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, 230 Celsius. Now, as I shared on my video on oven calibration, which I'll link to up here, do not trust your oven when it says that it's preheated. We wanna make sure that it is fully, fully preheated, which is why we turned it on right now before we even start making this recipe. So now, let's start making the recipe. In a one and a half quart saucepan or larger, bring two cups of water or 475 ml to a boil. Then add 3 quarters of a cup, or 65 grams, of lupini flakes. Begin stirring immediately, and you may also want to lower the heat to avoid any sort of a foam over. Which we're about to have right here. Okay, that was close. After about 4 or 5 minutes of stirring, you'll see that the foam stops. That's when we'll pull this off the heat and strain it. And while our lupini flakes cool, we're gonna prep some ingredients. For the onion in this recipe, I like to use a yellow onion. You'll use about a third of a large onion or half of a medium onion. Then for the dice, I typically do two horizontal slices, followed by a series of vertical slices. Some people argue that the horizontal slice isn't necessary, but since I'm going for a really fine, fine dice here, I'm doing it anyway. So we'll shave this off. And what we're shooting for is roughly 100 grams, give or take. Boop. For the spices, if you want to use pre-ground, that's fine. But I find that I get so much more flavor when I grind them fresh from seed. So we'll start with some coriander, two teaspoons. You'll use the same amount if you use pre-ground. It's just a little less flavor two teaspoons of cumin seed, and then one half teaspoon of kosher or sea salt. If you're not into the whole labor aspect of using a mortar and pestle, you can use a spice grinder. This goes way more quickly. It's cleaner, less effort. You'll want to shake it while you're grinding it. That makes sure that we get a really nice powder. And then we'll tip it upside down, tap it all into the cap. Ooh, that smells good. Now we'll set this aside for later. Into a food processor, we will scoop our drained lupini flakes. To these, we will add one large egg. Then we will process this until we get a nice smooth paste. We'll process initially for about 30 seconds and we'll scrape down the sides and process again for about another 20 to 30 seconds. Once it's looking fairly smooth, we will add our spices, the coriander, cumin, and salt. Then we will add four cloves or two teaspoons of minced garlic. And yeah, I'm using the jarred stuff here, I know. 
fresh would be better. Three quarters of a teaspoon of chili powder. And then our herbs. Just rip off a small handful or about a quarter cup of parsley. Same with some dill weed. And also some cilantro. Again, small handfuls. This is one part of the recipe where we don't have to be especially accurate. Then we will process until all of those herbs are thoroughly, thoroughly chopped up and blended in. This is going to take a little while. It took me about a minute there. And then I scraped on the sides, hit it again for another 30 seconds to a minute. Scraped on the sides one more time. And we'll hit it again for another 20 or 30 seconds. We'll scoop this mixture into a medium bowl. Then we will add our onion. Roughly one half cup, 100 grams, finely chopped. Two tablespoons of lupini flour. One half tablespoon of sesame seeds. One half teaspoon of baking powder. And finally, one half teaspoon of xanthan gum. Now this we really want to sprinkle around so that we can avoid any sort of clumping. Alternatively, you can mix all of your dry ingredients together and then add them all at once. Mix together thoroughly with a spatula until all of our dry ingredients have been combined and absorbed and the consistency is sort of like clay. Then we'll take a cookie sheet lined with either a silicone mat or parchment and we're going to wet it down really good with some avocado oil probably two to three tablespoons in total. Using your fingertips, rub it around, make sure that it's all nicely distributed. Then we will create some walnut sized balls of our falafel dough. I find that a number 50 disher works perfectly for this. We'll scoop some into the palm of our hand, roll into a ball and place on the mat. Using the number 50 disher, you should get 16 pretty uniformly sized falafel balls. We'll then give all of these a quick little spritz with some more avocado oil. And then using our fingertips, we're going to pat these down into little pucks. Tidy up the edges if you see any onion or herbs trying to escape. And then off to the oven where they will cook for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we're going to take these out of the oven and flip all of our little falafel pucks over. Rotate the pan 180 degrees and we're going to go back into the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. I've been checking on these since the 10 minute mark and they seem pretty perfect right about 15. Now we'll let these cool for a couple of minutes. In terms of serving, you can eat falafel kind of like the way you eat gyros on a pita or in some pocket bread or some flat bread with tomato and lettuce, onion, black olive, basically anything Mediterranean you can think of. In terms of sauce, you can make a tahini type sauce you want to go two parts tahini to one part lemon juice. So say a quarter cup of tahini and two tablespoons of lemon juice. When you mix this together, that tahini is going to kind of seize up. It's going to become more like peanut butter thickness. Then water it down one tablespoon at a time with water until you get the consistency you want. You can also serve this with some sort of yogurt dip or tzatziki, which is the way Connor and I are going to eat them in just a second once they cool off. All right, so I have Connor here. Hello. Connor has been my taste tester on this now, I think three different times, three different iterations. And hopefully this is the best one. You ready? I'm ready. So we're doing the tzatziki right here. I know what I think. It's pretty good, pretty yummy. So. The last time you tried them, you said it was missing a little bit of brightness. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think I took care of that here? Let's let's try it without the toxicity key. Okay. I think so. So last time you said you didn't grind up the spices. Correct. This time I ground you up did. I ground up the spices. And it definitely makes a difference. Yeah, the, you really get sort of that citrus out of the especially the cumin seed. And I think it adds that extra little bit of brightness to this. And I also think I got the onion amount dialed in properly. I agree. Oh, jeez, I just lost a chunk. No. Yep, Rescue, yep. No. Rescue mission. Mm. I recommend that you try the recipe as is initially, and then you can adjust the seasonings, the spices and so forth, up or down depending on your taste. I can also tell you that these reheat fantastically in an air fryer. I just go straight from the fridge into the air fryer, set it to 390, and by the time the air fryer has preheated and maybe gone one minute, they're good to go. So if you're a big falafel fan, let me know down in the comments if you've got any ideas for serving suggestions. I'd love to hear them because the family loves these falafels. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell next to it and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. And lastly, if you'd like to help the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button and see what memberships and perks are all about. Thanks for watching.